disintegration are one of the most famous effects in all CG. And I want to see how far I can push the new simulation nodes to achieve it inside Blender. I want it to be better than a simple effect. I want the mesh to be animated. I want the particles to generate from the volume. I want them to have some connection to the mesh while giving me absolute control over everything. And I want it to be at least just a bit close to perfection. So I break it down into a few steps. First I start with a simple static mesh. Make the basic disintegration effect for it and then apply it to an animated character. After that I can focus on improving the look of the effect. Also, stick around until the end to learn how you can get a $50 render coupon from our sponsor, Fox Render Farm. Let's get started. Oh, by the way, this is not a beginner friendly step by step video. This is more of an overview of the process, so, some experience using Jump Nodes is definitely required. I have this animated mutant character from Mixamo.com. This is the guy I am going to snap out of existence. My plan is to start with a static mesh, so I duplicate this mutant mesh. Keep it parent to the rig. This will be the disintegrating particles. Then I apply the armature modifier while on the first frame. And I have a static mesh. I create a new geometry node setup. The first step is to add points or particles to the volume of the mesh. For that I can use mesh to volume node. Adjust its values a bit and then follow it with a volumes to points node. I increase the density to get more points and to see things clearly here I decrease the point size using a set point radius node. And that's basically it for the point distribution. For the next step I want to create a mask for disintegrating areas that we can control from the outside. Once the points get inside the mask, they will start to disintegrate. So I add an empty sphere, call it controller and add it to the setup. Calculate the distance between each point and the empty and mask everything inside that empty using compare less than or equal node. If the distance is less than the empty's scale, that means those points are inside the empty. But this mask is just frame by frame. Once the controller leaves its position, some particles will be out of the mask. It is fine if you want to do it like this, but I want the controller to move freely and adjust its scale without worrying about previously masked points. And that's where simulation nodes become handy. I add a simulation zone to the setup. Then add a store name attribute node to store our mask. And I call it mass and plug our mass. To update it every frame, I add a named attribute node and get access to the attribute I just created and add it to itself. This setup basically runs every frame on a loop and updates the mass. I do a simple animation to the empty and move on to the next steps. Basically, when disintegrating, we are just adding movement to the previously static particles. So, all I have to do is add a set position node. Give it a bit of offset and plug our mask for the selection socket. Now, when I hit play, we are adding 0 0.05 set offset to every frame for our mask points. It is time to calculate their age, and age is very important. I don't want these particles to last forever. I want to delete them at some point. So I need to make these particles age after they have been captured by the mass. And once they reach their maximum age, which I have full control of, I just delete them. And age is not just for deleting particles. I can use that same calculation for reducing particle size, their color, its very useful. I add a store name attribute node and set it to integer since we are calculating the age by frames. Then access our age and plug multiply add node. Multiply our age with the mask and add 1. Store it as our age. 
This way it looks at the edge of the particles which are mass and adds one to it and stores that as their new edge. And this also runs every frame on a loop. To delete the particles, just add a delete geometry node. Access our edge and check whether the edge is greater than or equal to let's say 40. And plug that into selection. And just like that, every point that is mass and reaches the age of 40 will get deleted. I usually like to organize my nodes. And I think that's it for the foundation for disintegration effect. Let's apply this to the animated character. Very simple, just select our animated character, add a geometry node modifier after the armature and hit play. And it is not working. Where's our animation? Don't worry, I got this. The reason for this is how simulation nodes work. It only takes what we are inputting on the first frame. We can't do any updates to our input geometry after the same start. They won't count. In other words, if our character is animating, we need to tell that to the simulation every frame while it updating. So I need to update the position of the points in every frame inside the simulation zone. Since our animated character is a mesh and here I am inputting points to the simulation, I am going to make a connection through their index. Add a sample index node. Plug index to here and for the value we are sampling the position of the points. And I set that to points position using a set position node inside the simulation. And it is animating. But something is wrong. This is not what I am expecting. The mass is all messed up. Theoretically, we are not doing anything wrong, but it is not working. Well, I ignored this issue at first, continued the process, and I actually posted that a little while ago, and most of you liked it. Not many people seem to be worried about the missing particles in the foot or the sudden pop of particles. But I want it to be at least close to being perfect. And yes, this is the part of the video where I spent quite a few days trying to figure out a reason and a solution. So after quite a bit of try and fails and running out of names for blend files, it turns out the mesh to volume node is the one to blame. The first node in our setup. This converts the mesh into a volume on a frame by frame basis. Which means the volume created in one frame has no direct connection to the next frame. It just looks at the mesh and creates a volume. So when I distribute points in that volume, points with similar indexes might end up in a different places when the animation takes place. Since I am updating points position through their index, this is causing us so many problems, such as when these points jump here and there, it could get captured by the mass and will start to disintegrate. Which means after some time, we probably will not have any points in certain areas. This is also why it pops out on some occasions. So my final solution is this new node setup. I have to combine both the static mesh and the animated mesh. So back in our static mesh setup, I reference the animated mesh. Then I grab the index of the nearest surface point of the static mesh. Using that captured index, I found the position of the points in the animated mesh. And then set that as our points position. This will move all the points to their nearest surface point. Meaning all the points which were in the volume are now on the mesh surface. Now, through my previously captured index, I capture the position of the static mesh points. Then subtract that from the point's current position. This gives me the offset from each point to its nearest surface point. And when I plug that to offset here, I get the points back in the volume. In that way, I created this point distribution which is consistent with the animation. Now, just like before, I can use this to update our points with the animation without any jumping or wiggling of particles. And I fix it. Well, not entirely. 
The problem right now is we are deleting particles after they reach their maximum age. And deleting particles going to mess with the index. And our whole fix is depends on that index. So in order to fix it, you have to move this kill particle setup outside of the simulation zone like this. To view this clearly, I use our mask here for the selection socket. Use the not boolean math node to reverse it. This way points which get mass will not update their position anymore and only do the disintegrating movement. And just like that, I finally fix it. This fix took me a few days to figure out, but I have this feeling that there might be a better and easier way to do this. Anyway, now I can move on to the next step and improve this effect. To make the distribution even better, I add distribute on faces node and join it with previous points. But once you increase the points, it is very clear that we have a circular mass. And I hate uniform things like this. So I distort the points position in the mass by mixing it with a noise texture. I plug a vector math node to here and replace our upwards movement with a bit of movement to the right and to the back. And for this second input, I add a noise texture with a map range node to add noise to the movement. Then use a scale node to control its strength. This noise movement is basically 75% of the look. So it is important to spend some time there to find the exact movement I want. I also animate the noise over time using a scene time node. And I put this random value node anywhere I can to randomize any hard code values, such as this strength, maximum age of the particles, and etc. Then I can add an instances on points node and use an icosphere as instances. Reduce the scale, use our mass for its selection socket which will turn only the mass point into instances. Then I turn our age to a normalized age, which means it goes from 0 to 1 from birth to death. Using that normalized age, I can decrease the scale of the instances over time. I told you, calculating age is very helpful. Randomize that scale as well. And now they are missing materials. I want these points or particles to grab the color from their near surface rather than having a totally separate color. So to do that, first I use a sample near surface node before the start of the simulation and grab the UV map data from this mutant mesh. In this mesh, UV map was called UV set zero. I can access that inside the setup using a named attribute node. I store it and call it points UVs. This will grab that UV data. Then at the very end of the setup, I add a set material node and assign a duplicate of the mutant material. Now inside that material, I can access that stored attribute using an attribute node. Use that as the vector input for these textures. And just like that, I got the textures to influence the particles. Now, if this a disintegration effects, then this mutant needs to disappear. And for that, I am going to use the animated mesh. I add a new setup to it. Run another simulation to grab the mass. Since I want to make it identical to the previous one, Back in that setup, I group those nodes into a node group and use it in this setup. I give the attribute a new name. And just like before, I have to update the position to animate the mesh. Use the mesh mask inside the mutant material to set that part of the mesh transparent. And that's how I disintegrate an animated 3D character. I can finish the video here, but let me tell you a few more things I did to make it even better. 
I use the simulated points and convert them to volumes using points to volume node. This helped me to create a bit of dust looking effect. I can use that calculated edge to change its radius as well. Check out my volumetric portal tutorial to learn more about this type of volumetric effect. Also, I spent a bit more time animating the empty. You can combine more than one empty using O Boolean map node. Also, I create another setup to split and disintegrate the faces of the mesh. It was very similar to what I did here. The only difference was I put split edges node before the simulation. And to address each face individually, I used the evaluate on domain node and mesh island index node. This will stop the stretching of the faces. And at this point, I have spent quite a few hours making these effects, which means I definitely ran out of time to render any of these. And that's when I relied on the powerful capabilities of our video sponsor, Fox RenderFarm, a leading cloud rendering service. With its lightning fast and secure rendering, Fox RenderFarm supports a wide range of 3D software, renderers, and plugins. Plus, its flexible pricing option make it an excellent choice for both small and large scale projects. Not to mention, Fox Render Farm has even been trusted to render some of the biggest titles in the industry, including Love, Death and Robots. Use the link in the description to get a $50 render coupon to render your next big animation with Fox Render Farm. So that's how I created these disintegrating effects inside Blender 3.6. If you like to take a closer look at these effects, you can find them on Blender Market and our Gumroad page. Also, extended tutorials on each of these effects will be available for Patreon members as soon as possible. But if you want to start simple, I recommend following along with this disintegrating logo animation tutorial. I'll see you there.